Hey everyone, welcome to a different type of video. This is potentially a new series where I just sit down, I talk to y'all about trending foods and like the science, the chemistry behind it because I graduated with a degree in food science but as of right now, I'm not really doing anything with it so I wanna put it back into practice. I wanna learn more, I wanna keep experimenting and keep developing new things, right? The concept of the series is I'm going to take a food, a dish, a concept, try to break it down, see if I can figure out what's the science behind it, or if there is, or if the science is already pretty well known, maybe explore more on it, and kind of break, break it down while also condensing it so it's a little bit easier to understand for anyone who doesn't have a more scientific background, but also not completely just dumbing it down. If y'all do think it's a good idea, please let me know. Uh, leave in the comments below if I should continue doing something like this. And also maybe you even come up with some topics that you would like me to explore. I'm not saying I know everything I would be learning as well as you. But for today's episode, we're going to be exploring something that's been trending on Instagram, TikTok, and other social media platforms right now. Dalgona coffee is basically milk with some sort of coffee foam on top. It's been trending all over the social media platforms. People are making it left and right. You can't open up TikTok or an Insta or open an Instagram story without seeing some sort of variation of this drink. But as with any trending topic, people want to do different variations of it. So I've been seeing tea. I've been seeing uh, pink. What's the Starbucks pink thing? Like strawberry foam. Um, and I've been seeing matcha. Matcha is really popular. And I've been seeing a lot of posts on groups such as Subtle Asian Trades, Subtle Asian Eats, Instagram, where they're saying like the matcha isn't doing as well as the coffee foam. Like they can't get it to set up right, or if they do, it just immediately sinks to the bottom so there's not that layer of foam on top. So today I wanted to try to discuss why that is and maybe see if I can come up with some solutions or just kind of explore more on that concept. But before we begin that, we kind of have to talk about what is happening in the regular version, the coffee version. For the regular version, there are three ingredients. Coffee, instant coffee, sugar, and hot water, all in a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. And the concept is you combine it all together in a bowl and you mix or whip it together until it's foamy, thick, and it's supposed to sit on top of your milk. It can't, it can't like sink to the bottom. It can't like mix in with the milk until after you start stirring. When you just pour it on top, this will sit there. Now let's talk about what's actually happening to the mixture when you're whisking it and combining it. So what's essentially happening at the beginning when you're combining it is you're creating a colloid. And a colloid is whenever a substance or a particle-like substance, in this instance it would be the coffee, uh, it gets suspended in the water. Basically, it's almost like just like dissolving something. It's, it's the same concept as like dissolving something. And then as that's what happens when you first start mixing. And as you keep going, it's, the mixture starts to turn frothy. When it starts to turn frothy, bubbles are being created. And this is through the agitation of the mixture and adding air into it. Your coffee, your mixture is basically turning to the liquid with the coffee particles. And then there's like little bubbles in between the particles. And it's starting to become frothy foam, but it isn't thick yet. As you keep whisking, you're creating a pressure difference in the mixture, which is causing water molecules to expel outside of the mixture and basically becoming less liquidy, more airy, more foamy into the, th the thick foam that you start to see. And you might be thinking, this is really easy, but this is where the difference in how you mix your foam. So like I said, the water is being expelled through the pressure difference, but as that's happening, bubbles are beginning to form and more and more bubbles are forming as the mixture becomes thicker and they're all holding together so that they won't collapse. Now here's where the difference in how you mix it comes in. If you use a regular hand mixer, like just a regular whisk and just like go at it like that, you're creating different size of bubbles and that's all fine and well. It's gonna get there eventually, but the bigger bubbles will eventually take over the smaller bubbles and it'll cause, a, it'll cause less um structure in your mixture because it's like it's just like the bigger bubble just gets expanding because it's taking over it's taking over it's taking over right and it'll eventually just keep collapsing until like you kind of push it past that point and it'll become thick even at that point it won't stay very um thick and it'll start to collapse as you pour it over your milk and you'll start to see like running down 
but if you use an electric hand mixer or a stand mixer like I do here, the mixing is more uniform because it's like the same rotation throughout the mixture the whole time. It's more uniform. The difference in bubbles won't be that dramatic. So there won't be as much of like bubbles taking over other bubbles and the foam will become thicker, not only faster, but it also lasts a lot longer on top of your milk as well. So if you're deciding to make this, I would highly suggest using an electric mixer of some sort or just really be prepared to go to town with the hand whisk because like I said, it's gonna collapse faster and easier with a hand whisk but it's not impossible to get to that point. You're just gonna take maybe like double the time. I've seen a lot of my friends take like 15, 30 minutes, 40, I even read an article where someone was doing for 45 minutes just hand whisking their foam versus if you have a stand mixer or an electric mixer, if you really wanna push it to like really thick foam, it could take like 15 minutes. The one I did took like seven to eight minutes and I just left it there while I was doing other things. And that's the general process behind making this one. I was using coffee as my general uh, subject for that whole conversation, but honestly it can be done with any of it to a certain point. Next we're gonna discuss the difference between coffee and matcha as your substance. So coffee's a basic, it's confirmed to work. At, I mean, it's called Dalgona coffee. We first heard about this where you use instant ground coffee. Uh, it's a variation developed in Greece where they took a variation of the frappe um, and used instant ground coffee instead of like regular coffee to create their foam on top. And the reasoning why that they decided to use the instant ground coffee is because the lack of oil content or just the fat in instant ground coffee and the way it's processed because it has to get dried, it has to get um, processed through the plant and basically lasts on the market shelves a lot longer. When you have a higher oil content, it's going to be a lot less stable when you're trying to mix in um, all the air and try to create those bubbles. If you compare it to like if anyone who bakes uh, tries to make a meringue. A meringue is egg whites, sugar, and you just whip it to crazy until uh, stiff peaks form, right? But let's say you separate the egg whites and the egg yolks, but a little bit of egg yolk gets in there. Egg yolk's really high in fat. It's gonna ruin your meringue, and anyone who's tried to push a meringue with egg yolk inside will know that either it's gonna take forever or it's just not gonna set up at all. The fat is ruining the process of trying to connect the bubbles with the sugar and the uh, substance structure altogether. So that's why they use instant ground coffee, a more stable color structure, as I said before. Now, if we compare that to matcha, now, I believe that, especially in America, unless you're sourcing it straight from Japan, there's a huge variation of the quality of the matcha you're buying. Like, for example, the matcha that I have, it's just like, it, it says it's organic Japanese matcha, but I'm not exactly sure where I got it from. I bought it from an Asian market. I don't know much. So and so I don't know exactly the process behind what went behind this matcha. If I run it through my fingers, you can feel uh, how wet it is, even though it's a powder. And that could be for two reasons. It could be so fine of a particle. I don't think that's the case. I do think that it's just a higher fat content because because of the general structure of matcha and also the process behind it maybe just didn't get dried as much as uh, let's say instant ground coffee would get dried. I actually read um, an article, a scientific article done over by a scientific team in Japan where they kind of like broke down the structure of matcha and it is said that matcha is 5% lipid. That is a high fat content and like as before, higher fat, harder to create a foam with. So that could also be a reason too. Now let's say that you push for it, you made a matcha foam exactly the same way as doing it with the coffee foam. You got it to foam up, it's really thick, but when you pour it over the milk, it just won't stay on top. It immediately sinks to the bottom or just like blends in with the milk. Why is that? I thought I got the foam to work. That could just be due to particle size. Um, the size of matcha particles and the weight of matcha particles are higher than coffee. And I didn't, I couldn't figure this out, but it, I'm assuming if it's 
falling to the bottom it's denser than the milk even with all the air and all the water pushed out it's still denser than milk which is why it'll just sink to the bottom or the particle size is too large and it's not creating that proper colloid structure so even though you get it pretty thick it's like not setting up correctly like it falls apart so it's not really a foam and once you pour it in it just immediately collapses once there's like some sort of agitation to it aka it touching the milk or like you scooping it out and pouring it on top number one fat content matcha generally has a higher fat content than coffee in its base form and the process behind it could leave behind a lot more oil or fat content in the matcha process and number two size size matters here the matcha is too thick and too large to sit on top of something like milk maybe if it was a different um liquid being at the bottom but for this where it you're putting it on top of some sort of dairy product like milk uh, it's just too heavy it's too dense and it's going straight to the bottom still tastes great though still tastes great now let's talk about some possible solutions if you really want to do um, a matcha foam instead of coffee maybe you're just not a fan of coffee or you just really want to do a matcha for some reason um, I have two solutions uh, the first one I don't recommend as much because one I haven't personally tested it out I haven't seen too many people test it out um, is adding stabilizers now stabilizers are basically mixtures or chemicals that that help stabilize whatever you're putting it into um, for example the most common one is xanthan gum uh, you can try adding that in there um, to help stabilize the the foam mixture so it like kind of holds itself better uh, after you're done mixing it that is an option I personally don't suggest it because one, you, you have to buy a, a xanthan gum and who, and there's not really too many uses for xanthan gum at home anyways, unless you're making um, a lot of like preserved products or something, then, then I would buy it. And also too, even though it's not inherently harmful or anything, adding something as artificial as uh, a stabilizer could turn some people off, so I completely understand that. So solution number two, completely ditch this process of combining the sugar, water, and matcha together and try to force the foam to happen. And instead make like a matcha flavored whipped cream or foam, you know, uh, using some sort of dairy product. You can make a whipped cream with heavy whipping cream, sugar, and then at the very end, add in some matcha powder, flavor it up together like that. Put it on top of the milk. That could work too. Or use a milk-based uh, foam with some sugar, kind of like, um, I don't know if anyone has been to Starbucks and go gets like their cold brews with their foam on top. You can do that and then at the very end, add in a little matcha flavor. You wouldn't be adding too much instead of like the one tablespoon to one tablespoon be like, uh, it'd be like three tablespoons to like a teaspoon of matcha, you know, something like that. You gotta play around with the measurements a bit because you're adding at the very end, so it's gonna be a lot more pronounced, a lot stronger. That marks the end of this discussion. Hopefully it was informative, resourceful, and you can use it to kind of tweak your matcha foam if you decide to do it, or just completely ditch and just stick to the coffee. You can't go wrong with coffee. I absolutely love it. I've been drinking it nonstop lately. I really like the idea of this series. It's gonna help me grow and explore my knowledge that I learned in college, but never really put into real life experiences. Um, hopefully it'll help anyone out there who isn't as knowledgeable but is curious. If you have any suggestions or any topics that you'd like me to explore and discuss, I'll be more than happy to discuss it. My cooking videos have been mainly about anime and video games and just certain like trending topics. But for this series, I'm open to talking about anything. It can be something super simple, maybe something super intense. And if I can do an on-hands experiment at home, even better, so that I can, I can show you some results along with my discussion as well. But yeah, if you enjoyed the discussion, enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And hopefully I'll be back again with another episode. And of course, check out my cooking videos, which is what kind of started all this. I'm sure you guys would love it. If you're here, you obviously love food. So check out a cooking video. Here's my latest one. Here's my latest one.
I'll catch you on the next one. Hope you all have a good day.